Aries, thank you for joining me. This is your horoscope for October 2016. Now, on the 1st of October, the new moon in Libra happens in your 7th house of relationships. I've made a separate video on this. Have a look at that, but it's a really positive new moon that is all about romantic relationships, relationships with friends and colleagues, and you're the sign of the zodiac that really benefits most from this new moon because it actually sits in your 7th house of relationships. So it's perfectly placed. Take five to 10 minutes during this new moon on the first and just focus on what you want to achieve in your relationships during the month of October. By really getting clear on what you wanna do, you make the most of this energy and you'll really be pleasantly surprised at how far you come in that area of your life in this month of October. On the second, the moon moves on and it's still in Libra but it opposes Uranus and Aries, your sign of Aries, in the first house. So on the second, you'll notice that there's a push and pull between your own sense of individuality and personal freedom and the desire to compromise and to do things in a way that might be pleasing to other people. So there's no right or wrong here, but just be aware that you'll be pushed and pulled on this day and you'll have to make a decision. On the 3rd and 4th of October, the moon moves on, it moves into Scorpio, and it joins your Midheaven, Venus, and Black Moon Lilith, all of which are also sitting in Scorpio in your 8th house. And on these two days, you'll notice that a hidden feeling becomes apparent to you, a hidden desire. Like the hidden desire, for instance, to always want to be um, the head of a company, or a desire to be in a certain type of relationship that you didn't realize you wanted to be in, something new becomes apparent. And something that may be a little bit taboo, or maybe a little bit dark, or that may be a side of yourself that you haven't really allowed to come out before. So listen closely, and take those messages seriously, because taking action on them will be fulfilling. On the 5th of October, the moon moves on into Sagittarius, and it connects with your Saturn and Sagittarius in your ninth house. This is really a great day to uh, go out into the world, to travel, to discover something new, to enjoy yourself, um, to look at certain things and try and decide what the meaning is. I think you'll feel um, open, contemplative, enthusiastic, and ready and eager to learn new and exciting things. On the 6th of October, Mars begins to conjunct Pluto, and this conjunction lasts from the 6th of October until the 28th of October, so this is really significant. Mars is the personal planet of desire and war, and you know what you really want and what you're never going to compromise on. It's your ruler. So that's in Capricorn in your 10th, so there's a huge sense of drive towards your career at the moment, and you feel perfectly aligned with what you're working on. It's almost like I work, therefore I am. I'm working at a certain thing that I care about and I feel completely at peace with that. So that's Mars. Pluto is the planet of transformation and it's been retrograde for a long time, for the last five months. It's gone direct now. It's in Capricorn in your 10th house. The two come together and they create really fabulous, marvelous, male transformative energy and for these two to come together and sit there together for the duration of October means that you can really transform your career. So if careers need planning then you can really put those plans into place and into action and you can really put in the legwork to see things change for you for the better. You know, if you're a 25 year old working in a call center and you don't want to do that for the rest of your life, at some point you're going to have to say, okay, well, what else can I do? What's open to me? So let's say you decide to be an engineer instead. At some point you're going to have to go to engineer school and then you're going to have to look for jobs and it's a process and you have to start somewhere. This Mars Pluto connection is that place where you can start. It's really, really positive. On the 7th of October, the moon is in Sagittarius and it begins to trine Uranus and Aries. So again, we've got another great day for optimism, going out into the world, discovering new things, and you're kind of skipping along here. I think it's a really positive day and you feel really fired up, really energized. Great day to just go out there and enjoy yourself. Now, on the 8th of October, the moon goes into Capricorn and it joins 
Mars and Pluto in your 10th house. This is a day where you feel completely at ease in your working life. It's a great day to go to work, to do as much as you can. You'll be very productive and you'll feel totally aligned with what you're doing. So there are very few obstacles in your way. On the 9th of October, the first quarter moon occurs. This is when the sun and the moon square each other and the moon is halfway to being full. So there's a great sense of anticipation and building up and movement and energy coming in. And again, it's in your 10th house. So it's work, 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 really transform and make great things happen. And, you know, the reason I'm talking about work like this, you can really make changes. And if you're an employee, again, at a call center, you may be thinking, well, how can I change anything? It's your personal power to decide and to realize a career. You know, it's not about petitioning your boss saying, you know, have you considered my application for promotion? Will you actually do it? It's about what you have control of and what you can change. And if you're not being given the opportunities in your working life, then you can create them for yourself. On the 10th, 11th and 12th of October, the moon is in Aquarius in your 11th house. So these three days are really wonderful for you to spend with friends. I think you'll really enjoy the sense of optimism and the new ideas that you may get in about what you've been planning. And at the same time, there's a T-square in the sky. A T-square is like a triangle and it connects your North Node in Virgo in your 6th with your South Node and Neptune in your 12th house and they come together with Saturn in the 9th. So the more you know, the more you can change. It's really important for you to do research, to think about the things that are in your life and the things that you want to achieve. The more you know, the more you can actually bring into realization the more you can actually manifest. You know, if you've never heard of an aquarium, it's very unlikely that you're going to go out and buy one and put it in your living room. So talk to friends, talk to people who know you, talk to people who are successful in their working lives, look at what you can um, potentially do for yourself, and then make plans and get organized to actually do all of those things. On the 13th and 14th, the moon is in Pisces. It's joined Neptune, the South Node, and Chiron in your 12th house. And these couple of days feel much more internal. You're much more focused on what's going on within. You're really coming to the end of a cycle. You're really feeling like you're starting to detach from something which has been a big theme in your life. And you're letting go of that and you're focusing on the new. So this is a process of kind of cleansing and detoxing and bringing new things in your life. And you're like a, you've got a very adolescent kind of teenage energy to you in this month, Aries. It's all about really starting fresh and being optimistic for the future. On the 15th, the moon is in your sign of Aries and it conjuncts Uranus in your first. So this is your best day of personal power here. This is your good luck, gold star day of I am Aries, you know, watch me progress, watch me move forward. Nothing can stop you. The 16th sees the full moon occur and the full moon this month it's the hunter's moon and that is in your sign of Aries. So the full moon is when you're being showered with this energy and you will feel like you're just buzzing with yourself. You're going to be charged with your own energy. So again, you've made a lot of progress by now in October. Focus on what you still want to move ahead with in your own unique way and you will really really just get the inspiration coming in write it down make a note of it this new moon is gonna it's almost like you know when you're stand if you're let's say you're racing in your car okay and the you're both at the starting line it's revving your engine it's building up and then when the full moon occurs bam you go and you speed off and you're on your own cruising away into your future. So this is very, very energizing to you. On the 17th and 18th, the moon is in Taurus in your second house. These are very, very good days for you to make decisions about your finances and to also uh, launch products, to do the books, to speak to your accountant, to engage with anything to do with e economics, finance, you'll have the presence of mind for it, you'll be able to focus on the details, you won't be bored by it, and you'll be willing to work with that side of things. On the 19th and 20th, the moon goes into Gemini in your third house, and these are your communication days. 
The 19th particularly is the best day to learn and to make sense of things. Um, there'll be a lot going on. You, there's a grand cross in the sky as well. You'll feel pushed and pulled. Very important to get clear on certain ideas and to allow yourself to be filled with new information. That's what's really going to feel satisfying. The 20th is the best day to speak to um, a family member, a romantic partner, a friend, someone you may have had problems with, you're going to come across as crystal clear. It's a great day to have that sit down talk if you need to have one. On the 21st, this is another one of those big, big, big conjunctions now. And it's not a conjunction, it's a square. But Mars, the planet of war and desire, which is still sitting up there in your 10th house of career, that begins to square Uranus, which is in Aries in your first house. And this square lasts now from the 21st of October through until the 4th of November. This is like your own personal power now is completely aligned with what you're doing work-wise and your desire is work. So if you're in a job that you absolutely despise and that's totally counter to your nature, you're going to find it very difficult to keep up the facade this month, Aries. If you're looking to really do something that, which is aligned with who you are, which you can care about, you will feel this huge surge of power. I can almost feel it looking at this. You'll be super, super energized and you'll have crystal clear clarity in terms of where you're going. So really give yourself the opportunity to do that. You know, I started doing what I really love full time at the age of 28. You know, it doesn't have to be 18, you've got one chance and that's it. Louise Hay, the woman who wrote the You Can Heal Your Life books, she started writing those books at 50. It's never too late. So that's an important ingredient in making these changes because if you think, well, I'm 50 years old, I'm 60 years old, I'm done, then you're wa wasting all of this. You're not taking part in the, in, the, in the race. You're just kind of disqualifying yourself. So there's got to be a desire there. On the 22nd, this is a big day. A couple of things happen. First of all, Venus starts to conjunct Saturn. They now join forces as well for quite a long time, from the 22nd until the 4th of November. Venus is the planet of love and beauty. You do have an interest for discovering things and going out there and being adventurous. And Saturn in Sagittarius, it's kind of like... I'm questioning the path forward and I'm not quite clear. So it's not about getting clear that's so important for you. It's about the journey. It's about doing something. It's about going outside of yourself, being optimistic and really aligning yourself with these useful energies of saying, I'm just going to go out there and discover something for the sake of it because it's new, because I'm interested, because it's fresh. And I'm going to give life the opportunity to surprise me. It's also the last quarter moon on the 22nd, so now the moon is winding down. It's in Cancer here at the bottom of your chart, and there's a sense of ease now. Things are becoming quieter. Um, it's a, this is a great day again to kind of nurture yourself a little bit along these things that you're doing and to check in with your own feelings. It's not going to feel as frantic and as driven as earlier in the month did. And finally, the sun also moves into Scorpio on this day, on the 22nd. So happy birthday, Scorpios. We're entering your time now. And for you, Aries, you're kind of sliding into this Scorpio period of deeper emotional understanding and a more meaningful understanding of yourself. On the 23rd of October, the moon is now trining Saturn and Venus, both of which are in Sagittarius. It's a great day to travel again. So Throughout the month, travel is good for you, but this time it's a good time to include someone you love along, to take someone along for the ride. Especially someone who you can have fun with, someone you love, someone who shares in your youthful kind of optimistic outlook. You can have a really fab day on the 23rd. And on the 24th, there's a grand trine in fire. So there's a lot of passion, desire, um, movement, in terms of what is it that I care about, what is it that I want to experience, and when you align yourself with those passionate feelings instead of your duty, what you have to do, that's the way to make the most of these two days. On the 25th and the 26th, the moon moves into Virgo, it's in your sixth house, and it conjuncts your north node in Virgo. 
And these are very practical, sober days of getting clear in terms of what your future plans are. We're at the end of October now. What have you achieved? Look back. Put plans in place for the future, what you want to do in November and also for the rest of the year. And also, on a totally separate theme, it's a really good day to get your body in order and to focus on what you want to achieve in your physical health and to do with your even physical appearance. So this is a good day to um, schedule any kind of plastic or cosmetic surgeries if you want to do self-improvement. It's a great day to start a diet or a new exercise program. It's really addressing the physical self. On the 27th, the moon is in Virgo and it's all by itself here on your descendant. And it may be that someone appears in your life who's almost like a guardian angel who is a presence of groundedness and realism and organization. And this is someone who can be a friend for the foreseeable future. So that's kind of a random event. Look out for that. On the 28th and the 29th, the moon is in Libra and conjuncts Jupiter in Libra. And this is a kind of um, throwback to the beginning of the month where the new moon was in Libra. The moon has gone now full cycle and it joins that beautiful Jupiter. And this is really good luck and a sense of I socialize, therefore I am. And really being able to enjoy other people's company and presence. And these two days are great for social occasions, events, hanging out with other people. Really, really good. The 30th takes a real turn for the dark now. And for you, again, it happens in your 8th house of the other side of death. So you're really, really tapping into this. It's a new moon in Scorpio. The new moon is when you're setting these seeds of intention. And now this new moon is for the month ahead, November. Okay, But it's in Scorpio, which is intense and dark anyway. But then it's also a black moon because this is the second new moon that we've had in a month. And that happens very rarely. It's like a blue moon with full moons, where there are two full moons in a month. So having a black moon here is very powerful, especially um, if you're into witchcraft or wicker or magic or something like that, because it's, it's, a, it's a time, it, the new moon is a time to manifest anyway. But if there are two in a month, then it's manifestation squared, but also because it's Scorpio and getting to the truth and really connecting with the darker hidden forces and for you in your eighth house, the veil between you and the darkness. If you're someone who's interested in all of that, the occult, Wicca, you will really feel the power on this day. Um, if you're not into that, but if you're trying to get some answers, meditation, asking yourself the tough questions, you can really dive down into the cosmic or the collective unconscious and get the answers that you need and bring them back. And it's a really amazing day for you know the darkness it's halloween the next day so all of the things associated with halloween which is black cats pumpkins the light leaving it's just very much aligned with that and this one is a super super powerful one on the 31st then it is halloween and the moon is now in scorpio and it joined your black moon lilith in scorpio in your eighth house so almost as deep and profound as the new moon was, a really kind of inward looking, profound, um, spooky, kind of gothy kind of atmosphere around the end of the month. Really cool. I'll be sure to bring out my Halloween tarot card when I do my daily reading. So I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with in October. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. If you would like a private reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. Click on the readings tab and you can order your reading with me there. Have a wonderful October and I'll speak to you soon.